let us use the last 14 minutes of battery or maybe less than that anyway for give a third part of the small improvisation made on the 7th of February and 2017 and I will just add one or two aspects to understand more his life and biography and his spiritual teachings. As I have told you, he was living mostly on correspondence and translating English, Portuguese, Portuguese, English and writing the letters from here to other and he was publishing some, and some reviews and yes participated after Orfeo in Exilio, was also an important one from Augusto de Santa Rita where he published some poems and the notable articles about his movement, the sensationism, where he connects them with esotericism and occultism. After, he has published also the, in Portugal Futuristo in Centauro and he creates in the 20s a book, a, a magazine with vast and it called it Athena, where very nice magazine and it published some numbers, uh, three cross volumes with very nice poems and the graphic part. As Almada de Greiros is fellow at Orfeo and in most of these um, uh, magazines, uh, he was saying that they were really making a revolution in this kind of synthesis between art of painting and writing and strong messages to make, to shatter, to, to broke the conservatorism or the illusions of people. So Athena was also important and then it begins to uh, to be published in Coimbra, a magazine called it Presenza, where the new generation, intellectual generation, uh, led by José Regio, Branquinho da Fonseca, and Gaspar Simões e Casais Monteiro, they were very akin to receive Fernando Pessoa as their master of poetry. And so Fernando Pessoa, he feels that it's good for them, he almost says, and when they received the letter of Caspar Simões uh, giving very much praises to Pessoa and po poetry, he felt almost crying and he was so happy. But as a matter of fact, physically he was not so good. In 32 he tried to cut a, 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 a work, a place in the museum and library of Cascais, but uh, in the in the final decision of the jury he was not taken and it was very unhappy for himself. He could have lived it more time if he was stabilized or even if he had married with Ophelia, but he was burning in the, his spirit of writing and of independence and also in the water, the burning water, I were then to wine that he was drinking also a bit, although he was not seen never and he was very strong, he could drink almost a whole uh, jug of wine without problem. So he was also attracted to Omar Khayyam and he has made some rubaiyats, he has made some translations, he has created also themselves and he had some connection in his time with the Arabian tradition, when he was studying the paganism, he felt that Arabian side was very important to us because his objective side was given the science to Europe and that was stayed in Portuguese and could balance the fanatic side of the Catholic and Jewish tradition and he tried at that time to make a synthesis between Arabian and Pagan. But that he was left after, after he was 
feeling more that the Christianity in its Gnostic level and in the Christ as Logos was so important and also the Jewish tradition and the Kabbalah and he loved Isaac Luria, he has read some of these books that Gregor Midas has written about the Kabbalah and Violet and he has made some commentaries also and so he was making a synthesis in a certain way between all traditions on their perennial level. And so, when there was in 28 the taking of the, by Salazar, by the militaries, and then after Salazar by the 26, 28, 33, that was three important moments, and Fernando Pessoa at this time, at the beginning was for taking order for a restoration for a dictatorship, but after he began to see that it was not good, and at the end of his life, he began to write against Salazar. His last year is full of poems, not published, and writings against Salazar. And the most important moment, it was after he has published Mensaje, he didn't went to receive the prizes and he didn't want to be with the dictator and a few months after in february began the project of prohibition interdiction of secret orders and then fernando pessoa it seems that asked by someone from the freemasonry wrote an article in the newspapers and as there was no one knowing and he had just received a, a prize on Message, his, this, his famous book on history of Portugal, seen from a deep spiritual and psychological level. It was published and it was defending very strong and with very no, much knowledge the freedom of the secret orders, notably from the Masonry. And this was not accepted at all by conservative, by Catholics and by the government and the deputy. And they wrote against Fernando Pessoa in many newspapers. And Fernando Pessoa tried to, to, to answer to them, but he was not allowed it more. So we find many papers in his unpublished papers. And now some of them have been published by some people. I had already published some in 1988 and notably in the last years Jose Barreto has made also a nice work and publishing some of them. At that last year Fernando was because this was very strong against Catholic search and he says in his last words this note autobiographic or biographic the 30 Mars of 35 he says he is against all organized religions and special to Christian Catholic religion. But he says he is a Christian Gnostic. <coughs> and so he is connected with Christ, with the Logos, with that tradition. And he says even in some unpublished papers or small published papers that the last word were that is searched by all the occultists or Freemasons in our days, as someone has told, he says, is Christ. He says like that. And so, he is writing against Our Lady of Fatima, or he is writing against the church, but he is also writing some poems two, three months before dying, and I published them also to Our Lady. As he is writing to his mother, when he listened to Ansoir Olima, it is a nice piece of music that his mother used to play in South Africa and when he in 35 he listened suddenly in the radio and he has an outburst of tears and emotions and write a long poem about Ansoir Oliva. But these writings against secret associations was really a fight that it took the his mission, his public apparition, uh, as a necessary 
question of sincerity of freedom and after one month of this secret orders discussion he published this autobiographic note where he affirms himself what he is and decides to fight against the international money, international finance and against all the oppressions like the kind of communism or fascism or whatever too much totalitarian state. He says that he is a nationalist but in the sense that he believes that each country has a soul, a spiritual soul. And that is very important for our days, where this kind of globalization from some people, and from Soros or others, they are trying just to make a soup of pizzas and McDonald's and just uh, chunky food, chunky music, whatever. And it is important to fight to keep the values of the spiritual tradition of each country. Each country had its own masters and its own poems, its own traditions. It's very important. Even in this magazine Exilio, uh, the, directed and founded by Augusto Santa Rita, a brother of the famous painter Santa Rita Pintor, that, uh, was also a friend and participating in the adventure of modernism with Orfeo. This man, Augusto Santarita, speaks about this spiritual tradition that is passed from generation to generation from the bird singers that are the poets and the mothers listen to them and then they tell the children, they sing to the children and they receive.